Welcome to This Old Nerd, and this episode is different because one, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Aya Zaktar, I am This Old Nerd, and we have shot this episode out of order, which means I might seem tired now. It's because you're going to see what I ended up doing. I'm scurrying around in hot attics, I'm trying to connect something. Now, what would I be doing in an attic? What's today's project? Well, you've probably seen this project before. It's actually getting over the air HD television again, but we have new limitations because I don't have the same attic space and I don't know where anything is in this town, okay? So, giant antenna, this old nerd, hooking it all up, coming up. For this project, you're going to need coax cable. You're gonna need a way to terminate the coax cable and what we have here is the satellite and digital cable toolkit, which comes with everything we need uh, except we ran out of connectors. These are satellite cable TV F connectors. These are compression fittings. You have a little device that attaches the, the fitting, a wire cutter, you know, things you need for that kind of thing. You're going to need a drill with a bit big enough that the RG6 cable can go through. And you're obviously gonna need some kind of TV tuner and an antenna. All right, since we want to have over the air HD, we need to know which way to point our antenna and what kind of antenna we're going to need. Now there's a lot of sites out there called like antennaweb.org and that's pretty good, but I really like a site called TV Fool. Take a look at TV Fool, you come in and I'll show you this. It's a simple website. What you do is you check your address for free TV, you click there, then actually you click down here. We're gonna put in our address so you can find us. If you wanna come over, go ahead. Now check this out, it's going to find out where the transmitters are and where you have to point your actual antenna, which is very handy. So let's wait this out. Okay, now let's take a look at this. We have what looks to be a lot of data here. This here is gonna show you where you're gonna point your antennas and where exactly the signals are coming, coming in. Now, if you look over here, we had to figure out where our networks are. Our networks are located right over here. You can see it says independent PBS, AZT, IND, and all these things, it's ABC, NBC, CBS. It gives you a lot of information about each broadcast tower. Now, in our case, a lot of them are located in this quadrant. And if you take a look over here, we have this information by azimuth. You have the compass orientation. We have true north and magnetic north, which are different. So that's gonna determine where or how you use your compass. So for our case, because most of our stuff, let's see, let's find ABC. ABC is 164. We wanna watch CBS, that's 164, 164. That's really handy. All of the towers or most of the towers are all in the same line. So that's gonna help us find the channels we want on our tuner. All right, so we need to know what kind of antenna we can get away with. I mean, it would be nice to have rabbit ears and that kind of thing. But over here, we can see our networks, seven, 12, 29, 30, 38. These are where all the channels are. These are the channels. So we look at the color. We have a green, we have a, like a yellow, whatever these colors are. If you take a look here, it'll show you in this little chart, background color, green. An indoor set-top antenna is sufficient, yellow or red or gray. In our case, a lot of our stuff is in red or gray, and so that's gonna determine what kind of antenna we get. We're gonna need something like a long-range antenna. So if you look again back at this information here, you can see how far away you are in miles from the transmitting towers, distance in miles. In our case, we're about 40 to 50 miles away from a lot of these things, so we're going to need a pretty hefty antenna. One of the things about antennas are that they actually have like this weird pie chart kind of thing that tells you what kind of range they can get. Now antennaweb.org shows you that, but TV Fool doesn't. So we're gonna go to antennaweb to find out what kind of antenna we need. We're gonna put in our address as is normal. Here's where it gets interesting. Here's where we're gonna be able to use some information from antennaweb that wasn't on TV Fool. And if it's on TV Fool, maybe it is, I just couldn't find it. You see this, this, these colors here? We have green, blue, and violet. Well, if you click the violet UHF, you're gonna see a little pop-up. Do you see this antenna selector wheel or pie chart? I'm not sure what you wanna call it, but you can see the antenna reception patterns. Because we're so far away from the transmitters, we need purple, large directional with preamp to receive some of the signals. So we need to make sure that our antenna matches this color wheel. If it hits purple, we're good. And if it doesn't, well, we're out of luck. All right, you might have noticed this in one of the older episodes, there was a giant box over here because we've had this antenna for a bit. This is what we wound up getting. This is the Extreme Antenna, Fringe Deep Fringe 8 Bay Antenna. And you can see the way it works and you'll see the actual antenna relatively soon. But let's look for that color wheel. All right, let's see if we can come in. This is in Spanish. Where's the English? Over here. Antenna selector, can you get a shot of that? 
Okay, so on the box, you can actually see antenna selector works with the following zones. And we were in the violet zone, and that's what we really care about. Obviously, if you can get the violet zone, it's gonna get the light green, which is the really close by stuff. So this is really good for what we need. Obviously, it's a very large antenna. Now, again, you might not be able to see the color wheel information on Amazon or this old nerd store or whatever, but if you wanna to go to an actual brick and mortar, look for this information, okay? Because this is really going to help you. It's gonna make it very easy. Now, now that we've got the antenna, Obviously, it's not in the box, it's upstairs. Now we have this antenna and we have the information as to where to point it, well, we gotta direct the antenna. The weird thing is, since this whole digital to, I mean, analog to digital conversion thing we did in the United States, you have to make sure your antenna's pointed just right or you get nothing because it's digital. You get a one or you get a zero and more times than not, you get zero. So let's go to the attic where we put our antenna. We're putting our antenna on in the attic because in this new development, can you take a look out the window there? You can see there's some nice shiny houses. In this development, you need to go through the board before you put an antenna outside, okay? And because I don't know if that's going to work or not, I'm going to put this in the attic for now and try to fill out the paperwork and maybe one day it'll be outside and it'll get all the channels because right now, we don't get NBC. All right, so we're, here's what we have to do for the cabling. Because of the way the house is built, we got to go into the attic. But to get into the attic is not going to be that easy. So what we figured out was we're going to run a cable through this closet. This was a closet and this is my office. It's still under construction. That's why I'm all free with drilling holes. So I took this drill, not a joke, went into the corner over there and found out it was really reinforced. So then I moved slightly over and then fished the cable up there. Now, how did we fish the cable, all right? Here's part of the problem. Up there is a big air conditioner unit, which means I can't just go into the attic and go in the back and pick up the cable like I used to be able to. So what I did was I drilled that hole, took a hanger, then I put the hanger up there and then was able to see where the hanger was. The thing is, the hanger didn't hit any pipes or electrical or anything, so that was very lucky. Well, you should use a stud finder, make sure there's no electrical running up there. But considering I could see how this place was constructed, I'm pretty sure that wasn't the case. Then once I saw the hanger, I took the hanger, took it to my coax cable, I have a whole bunch of coax cable here, so it's like the 100 footer, taped it with a little bit of tape. Don't use a whole lot of tape or it won't fit through that hole unless you made a gigantic hole. We used a half inch drill bit, taped it, pushed it up, then came the hard part, how to fish it. So now we had something seven feet away from the opening of the attic, and then I had to actually, Hopefully this isn't your case. We had a hook for our closet. Used the hook, grabbed it, and then I have the cable right in the attic. Now in a previous episode of This Old Nerd, we showed you how to terminate your coax cable connections. And what we're gonna use is pretty much the same thing. This is our kit from Data Shark has all the tools we need, but we needed more connectors because we used them all up in the last house. This is seal tight cable TV F connectors. These are compression connectors and why I like compression over crimp is the fact that these things really stay on the cable. So they don't come off, your connection isn't gonna fall apart. So that's really handy. And here's how to make a coax cable from a clip from an old episode. The fun thing about our kit, it actually has instructions on how to make cable. Step one, strip cable. And then you have these fibers, you gotta pull them back like that. And you put your fitting on top of there. I'm gonna try to make the cable and do what they say, but I've always had difficulty with this. We got our cable, we got our stripper. Not that kind of stripper. Okay, this should remove the sheath. Okay. Oh, look at that, it actually is working so far. Now here are our fibers, we're gonna pull, uh, bend them back like they said. And now we gotta take this point off because we need a connector itself. Okay, we're gonna remove that piece and there you can see, this is the fun part that actually goes into our tuner. All right, so we have our cable, we got our compression fitting, we're gonna put our compression fitting over the cable like so, thusly, there we go. So we have our compression fitting on top of this cable, but we need to affix it permanently. So we're gonna use this tool that came with our kit. We're gonna pop that in there. And then we're gonna just put, push down there. And now you have a cable. So take a look at that and that's not coming off. We gotta go into the attic and because of the size of the attic, I'm going to play cameraman and wobbly and go up there. We have a compass on an iPhone and you can tell this is my iPhone because it's blazing pink. No, it's camera bombs. Now we're in this extraordinarily hot attic. Excuse this camera work. 
We're in the hot attic and what we need to do is find 164 degrees. Actually, we want to see, let's see what setting we're in. We're in magnetic north and the magnetic information, I don't know if you can see that. Now the iPhone's got a couple settings. If you go into the, into the information, you can choose whether you're in magnetic north or true north. This might be hard to see on camera because it looks like it's being blown out. But we're going to use true north, hit done. And we need to be at about 164 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and start pointing around. 164 should be somewhere around here. So that's at 165. We can keep fiddling with that. And that's going to determine how our antenna is set up. Now, if you take a look, the antenna is actually right up here because we have figured out a way to do this. I'm going to try to pull back. It's very difficult up here. It's very, very tight. All right. So hopefully you can see the trees for the forest. There's a lot of stuff here, or the forest for the trees. This is a very large antenna, and it does have a point where you can hook it up to a mast. We wanted to test it out, and it's actually being held with a cable tie just to see if it gets the signal, because we needed to know if it worked. So there we go. It's actually set properly to the right angle. So instead of the antenna just facing flat, we tilted it back slightly, and that actually got us more signal. So you can see, again, it's very tight up here. So what you're going to do is once you find your angle, you want to lock this down so you don't get it messed up for any other reason. Don't forget that this antenna is not enough necessarily to actually get the signals we want. So what we have is a cable going into one piece of our amplifier, which then goes past me, to our actual amplifier. Here's our amplifier. And this is that coax cable that we made that goes into my office so I can get the signal. Now you can see we have a lot of coax cable. Now the reason why we haven't cut this off to the shortest length, because don't forget the shortest length of cable is going to give you the strongest signal. The signal gets attenuated by the length of the cable, so you want it short. This room is going to go and make, undergo a makeover. We're going to have paint up and we're going to have a fancy desk and all things are going to change in this space. So you're going to see a very nice office in here. But right now, since I don't know where everything's going to be, I can't just cut the cable. Not yet. I will do that later. I've attached the fitting to our Elgato ITV1 given to us by the fine folks at Elgato. We're going to hook this up to our Mac. Now let's see what's going on. So you can see the TV starts up right away with the TV application. This is ITV. Now we have, if come on in here, you can see that we have a list of favorite channels. These are the networks. Here's channel two, which is uh, Fox here. And if you come down here to the preference pane, you can see the signal quality is fading around. The signal strength is staying at a certain quality. Probably means that I need to go upstairs and reorient the antenna. Let's take a look at other channels up here, please. We're going to look at five and then we're going to look back down. Let's see. If you look to the right, you can see we have, we can actually see television, right? We have sports, which means that's working fine. If you take a look at the preference pane down here again, you will see that we have great signal quality and great signal strength. Don't forget signal quality is much more important than signal strength. Let's take a look at ABC. Same kind of thing. Great quality, great strength. Take a look. We got TV running. That's a good start. We don't have all the channels we want right now, but I just need to reorient the antenna just slightly and we ought to be good to go. So what about the whole partner acceptance rating? That's the most important part of any project we do. It's why it's the par. Here's what the situation is. It really depends on your partner. Now I asked my wife, I said, how do you expect to get TV in our house? Do you expect it via computer or a television? She said, computer. I asked her why. She says, because I live with you. So if your partner knows that you're kind of a hacky, kind of nerdy, kind of crazy guy, they might be more understanding. It's really on you as the nerd to make sure that experience is seamless. Now, my wife likes watching television through the iPad, so we're running it through ITV, our, our television through ITV, so she'll be able to access it via the iPad with no problems. That's important. Make sure your partner doesn't have to learn anything new and it'll feel the same. But before you cut the cord and before you say, you know what, forget it, we're not gonna have cable anymore, make sure that the programming that you like or your wife likes or your partner likes Make sure you still have access to that. If that means you have to have a Hulu app or you have to have a Hulu built into Media Center, do that. Make it really easy. And once you make it easy, everything will fall into place. <sighs> okay, it's, it's, it's hot. I'm tired. Let's, let's, let's end the episode. You got that camera, Mom? We're ending the episode. Now, remember to ask yourself this question, by the way. Maybe when you move into a new house or you're just kind of walking around outside, ask yourself, how's your tech life? 
because it could be better. Maybe you're not an idiot.